Thanks God, we are on our fourth week of fourth quarter and this will be on June 7 to 11, 2021. So our title for this week, Truthfulness and Accuracy of the Material Viewed. Ang katotohanan daw at yung pagiging tama ng mga bagay na pinanunood natin. So, our most essential learning competency number 25 says, Determine the truthfulness and accuracy of the material viewed. And since it is, this is a, a viewing skill, so our enabling competencies are differentiate reality from fantasy based on a material viewed and express one's beliefs, convictions based on a material viewed. So, class, gaya ng inyong nakita, so, material viewed, kailangan talaga natin ngayong magbukas ng internet and manood ng mga short video clips in order to answer the test ahead of us. Okay? So, there are, I, I think, a four tests. Kailangan natin itong sulyapan sa internet. Kasi nga po, this is a viewing skill. So, let us have a quick review. In first quarter, you learned how to identify the genre of material viewed. You analyzed the videos in terms of their genre, content, and features. You also learned that those materials are a good source of information. So, flashback muna tayo. What are the different uh, genre ng material viewed na inaral noong first quarter? And these are news, uh, news flash weather report, internet-based program, movie trailer, and documentary. So, familiar ba tayo? Let us have some images para makakatulong. Okay, so these are internet-based program from Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, alin pa ba mga kilala ko dito? Dig, Bitly, etc. Okay, our coming soon movie trailer and some documentary films. So, in this lesson, you will learn how to evaluate these materials based on their truthfulness and accuracy. So, to determine the truthfulness of a material you viewed, you should identify what is real and what is fake. Most of the fake news are circulated through videos in social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. We often decide to trust them and forget to assess the quality of the information itself. So, kalimitan kasi class, yung mga forwarded messages, forwarded videos, uh, yung mga malimitan ang trending sa Facebook, sa Twitter, sa Instagram, hindi daw, hindi daw yun lahat totoo. Some are fake. And because nga, marami ang nanunood, so sometimes we considered it real. So sabi dito sa padalawang paragraph, you can categorize fake news into two ways. The first one is misinformation. It is a false information that is shared because it is believed to be real. On the other hand, this information is all a false information that is spread even though it is known to be false. To help you do a fact check, there are sites like factcheck.org and snopes.com. Even Google has its own fact check feature to identify fake news. The Google fact check tool. Okay, so very timely itong skill natin. Kasi nga, sa pangapanahon ngayon, mas ginagamit talaga natin ng internet. So sometimes daw nakakaroon ng misinformation and sometimes nakakaroon ng disinformation. But both of these two are fake, false news or false information ang kinikater nila. So kaya mahalaga talaga na matutunan natin mag-evaluate which is true, which is accurate, and which is fake. Okay, let's move on. So punta na tayo sa learning test 1. A post circulating in Facebook recommends a bowl of freshly boiled garlic water to cure COVID-19. So, I believe talaga itong branding itong news na to. So, ayan yung uh, 
picture ng forwarded na uh, forwarded message na kalagay doon good news who wants coronavirus can be cured by one bowl of freshly boiled garlic water and uh, kayo na magbasa ng iba ha I know, inyo na itong nabasa. Alam nyo, malalo na yung mga matatanda. Mabilis talaga silang napapaniwala nito. Tapos may ganito pang nakalagay. Ano, Can eating garlic help prevent infection with the new coronavirus 2019 and COVID? So, garlic is a healthy food that may have some antimicrobial properties. However, there is no evidence from the current outbreak that eating garlic has protected people from the new coronavirus 2019 or NCO. Yan naman ang sinasabi sa atin ng World Health Organization. So, hindi idinideny ni World Health na ang garlic ay meron talaga siyang antimicrobial properties. However, yung relationship nito kay coronavirus, yun ang medyo question mark. So, sabi dito, do a fact check to prove that the Facebook post is a false information. Use the information from the World Health Organization to complete the table that follows. So, here in learning task 1, you're going to copy the table on your paper. If you have a way to connect to the internet, watch the video on this link. So, meron nito kaklas sa inyong class, uh, sa inyong LEAP or sa inyong module, uh, ikakopy lang nyo sa YouTube. And here, ito po yung table na kukopyahin. So, ang claim, ano bang ibig sabihin ng claim, ano yung sinasabi ng fake news, drinking boiled garlic water will cure COVID-19. Ang rating natin ay false. So, uh, so syempre, dadaan natin siya sa fact check tool ng Google. Ang magiging reliable source natin ay World Health Organization. Kukuhanin mo yung title ng news article or video na napanood mo. And then, sa fact or evidence, information you found as proof. So, kukopya ka lang ng important details. So, example natin, Coronavirus, uh, WHO or World Health Organization. Yan ang title daw. And then, example ng information, Coronavirus disease is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. So, yan ay example lang. Kayo nang bahala maghanap. So, ang tanong, ma'am, paano kung wala akong makita from World Health Organization? Can I get from other source? Yes, pwede po. Basta follow nyo lang yung format and make sure it is a reliable source so wala magiging problema diyan. Learning Test 2. Watch an eyewitness documentary on COVID K9 by Howie Severino. Then complete the information below and use the guide questions on the checklist to determine the truthfulness and accuracy of the video. So, I have here an example. Ito class ay nasa introduction part ng inyong lip. So, here, ang example ay China started claiming the islands of the, Royal, the West Philippine Sea in 1947. So, yun ang claim. Ano? And then, here, nanood siya ng video clip, sinulat niya yung title, sinulat niya yung web address or yung URL. Ito yung may HTTPS, okay? And then, the YouTube channel, kinuha niya yung channel. And then the resource person, so sometimes sino yung nagsasalita, sino yung nag-deliver ng video, or sino yung gumawa ng documentary, yun ang nakalagay dyan. And after watching this documentary, sinagutan niya itong mga questions sa left. Is, is the creator or producer or resource person in the video reputable and credible on the subject matter? Ibig sabihin siya ba ay may kaalaman doon sa pinag-uusapan? Halimbawa, Halimbawa, ako ay, kagaya ko, ako yung teacher. Tapos, nagbigay ako sa inyo ng balita tungkol sa COVID-19. Sa palagay nyo, will I become a reputable and credible person for that subject matter? Kahit teacher ako, syempre ang sagot ay hindi. Kasi, yung COVID-19, which is about science, which is about uh, parang medicine, ano, technology, lahat na. So, hindi siya related, lalo na ang major ko ay English. Pwede siguro ko ang nagbigay ay science teacher, pero dahil ako yung English teacher, I believe I am not reputable and credible enough to give any news about 
COVID-19. So, yun guys ang i-analyze ninyo. Yung bang kanyang trabaho at yung kanya bang sinasabi ay congruent sa isa't isa. And then, number two, identified through the available profile information. So, Merong, kasi syempre lahat ng mga news may ibibigay ang mga profile information ng tao. Ano, yun nga, iba background check nyo siya, sino ba siya, ano ba ang trabaho niya. Kung sa palagay nyo relevant, eh di ang sagot ay yes. Qualified to talk about the topic. So, doon pa rin niya nakaugat sa number 2. And connected with a credible institution. So, halimbawa nga COVID-19, tapos English teacher, taga Banahis. O, credible ba siya? Siyempre, hindi. So, gano'n natitirinan nyo? Siya ba ay connected sa isang credible institution? Yung bang kanyang trabaho ay makakapagbigay ng sapat na kaalaman? So, so kung ano mang topic ka discuss niya. And then, focus tayo sa number two. Accuracy naman ito is the information relevant and up-to-date. So, ito ba daw ay very timely? Kung halimbawa, coronavirus, syempre timely yan. Pero kung ang pinag-uusapan ay yung mga influenza, hindi na timely kasi matagal na yon. And then number six, supported by evidence and very viable in another source. So, gayon guys yun na, matandaan nyo to. Kapag ang isang bagay ay totoo, may makikita at makikita kayo niyan from different sources. Hindi pwedeng totoo, pero iisang source lang ang nagsasabi. Kapag din naman kayo, let's say, in real life, pagpa may isang witness dyan na nagsabi, halimbawa, si Pedro po ang nagnakaw ng manok, pero siya lang ang nagsabi noon. Pero ang iba, sinasabing hindi, si Pedro kasi ay natutulog ng panahong yon Sa palagay nyo, yung bang nagbibintang ay credible enough. So, kailangan, supported din siya ng iba pang at uh, source, pwedeng ibang tao. Yun ang sinasabi dito sa number 6. Number 7, believable after comparison with other materials with the same topic. Okay, ito daw ba'y kapanipaniwala daw pa yung information na yon na pwede daw natin ikumpara doon sa mga materials, let's say same topic, kagaya halimbawa nung sa garlic. So, aside from WHO, may makukunan ka pa ba ng iba pang information? So, kung meron, Di ang sagot ay yes. Pero kung syempre, kung wala, eh di ang isasagot mo ay no. Does the creator, producer, resource person in the video clearly own responsibility on providing accurate information? So, eto yung mga parang copyright infringement. Ano, siya ba talaga ang gumawa ng video or kinapipaste lang niya? Kunwari, kanya pero halta namang hindi. So, Yan ay i-analyze nyo maigi habang pinanunood ninyo. Number nine, remain objective or unbiased, fair in covering the topic. Pag sinabi nating objective, unbiased, yung bang sabay walang kinikilingan, lahat ba ng facts ipinipresent niya ng pantay? Kay alam niyo dati binibintang to kay ABS-CBN eh. Kasi si ABS-CBN pag daw nagbabalita, pagka sila ay pro, let's say, Pabor sila sa topic, lahat ng ipapakita nila yung magandang epekto, hindi nila pinapakita yung bad effects. There are channels like UNTV, personally, nanonood kasi ako doon, pag nagbabalita sila, ipinapakita nila yung good effects and then bad effects. At bahala ka as a viewer mag-decide kung alin sa dalawa ang iyong pipiliin. So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng number 9. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng pagiging objective. Hindi halatang may pinapanigan ang ating producer. And number 10, provide content well founded on facts which serve its purpose, inform, explain, and persuade. So, tingnan nyo ha, nakalagay dito, yung content daw ay nakabase sa facts, hindi nakabase sa opinion. And, look at this, uh, anong nakalagay dito sa taas, authorship, accuracy, and purpose or objectivity. So, yun ang three classifications on how to determine the truthfulness and accuracy of the material viewed. So, ganito rin ang gagawin ninyo. I believe this is very simple. Very simple yung direction, pero gagamitan nyo siya actually ng analysis kasi kailangan nyo talagang panoorin yung video para naman yung isasagot mo diyan tama. Okay? And, okay, may patural tayo ng konti doon. 
have a way to connect to the internet, watch the video on this link. Ito po yun, COVID K9. So, same. Ma'am, kukopyahin ba namin itong table? Yes, kukopyahin nyo yung table. Kasi pag hindi nyo kinopya, hindi ko yan masyadong maiintindihan. Kasi guys, hindi ko naman ito memorize. Okay? So, mas madaling mag-check kung yan ay kinopya nyo and then kita ko yung sagot at yung sinagutan. Okay? Let's move on. Test 3. After accomplishing the checklist, answer the questions that follow. Okay, nakapag-analyze ka na daw, nakapag-checklist ka na. Na-analyze mo na yung producer, na-analyze mo na yung writer, na-analyze mo na yung video itself. Now, there are five questions here. Sabi mo dun, how many check marks under yes did the documentary get? So, Para sa iyo, ilan ang nailagay mo? Huwag mo i-compare dun sa classmate mo. Kasi baka yung nakita mo, hindi niya nakita. And then number two, what pieces of information did you find out from the documentary? So ano yung mga natutunan mo doon? May natutunan ka ba sa documentary ng COVID-19? Ano yung mga mahalagang information? Pwedeng isa, dalawa lang ang sagot natin dyan. Number three, are you convinced that the documentary is truthful and accurate? So, naniniwala ka daw ba na talagang ito'y tama, makatotohanan? Four, what do you think is the intention or purpose of the creator of this video? So, dito naman, bakit niya sinulat ang video na yun? Is it to inform, to persuade, or to entertain? And number five, would you share or recommend it to your friends? Pag sumagot ka ng yes, so sasabihin mo why. At pag sinabi mong no, and then you you need to answer the question, why not? So, may counting explanation lang tayo dyan, guys. So, sabi ng ating uh, thinking man here, these are personal questions that you need to answer. So, ito ay base on your analysis, critical analysis of the video clip. And note, if internet is not available, think of a documentary you have watched in YouTube or Facebook before, then accomplish a checklist and answer the questions. So, let's say, ma'am, wala po kaming internet connection ngayon. So, ano daw yung pwede mong, yung mga napanood mo noon na documentary? Uh, halimbawa, yes, yeah, so Jessica Soho, napakadaming documentary dyan. Ilalagay mo lang yung title para naman makarelate ako, mahanap ko din sa internet yon. Kasi syempre mahirap mag-check kapag hindi ko naman din napanood. So, ilalagay mo yung title, ilalagay mo kung saan mo kinuha, and then, hahanapin ko na lamang yun sa YouTube para matchikan ko naman yung iyon checklist and also these questions. Learning Task Force. Ito na po yung ating performance task. Ito yung ating pinakamahalaga. Okay, think of a news story that you have heard or watched recently. It could be the latest about COVID-19, Miss Universe pageant, or something else that you have heard or seen that interests you. Make sure it is a national or international story that you believe to be true. So, pinahanap sa iyo balita. Kahit daw ano, ma, kahit um, ano na sa palagay mo, nagiging nakahuli ng iyong interest. Plus, ang halaga, pag sinabi natin national story, so it concerns about the Philippines. Pag sinabi naman natin international, ay the outside the country. So, pwede sa China, pwede sa US, or something like that. Hindi pwede yung balita lamang sa inyong barangay. Okay? Hindi pwede yon. Now, try to find reports on that story from two different sources, from news, broadcast, search engines, social media, or online newspaper sites. Then, accomplish a table that follows to see the similarities and differences of information from the two sources. Actually, guys, ginawa na natin ito noong uh, first grading. Kaya nga ang review natin kanina first quarter, to be exact, that is lesson 2. So, yung... Uh, 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 I think lesson 3 na yata pero ito kasi ito ay follow. Ang lesson to natin ay genre of the material viewed. And then the, the next lesson, kung papaano yung researching a topic. So, doon, ay, dito, doon hugot ng questions na to. So, example only. Tingnan muna natin ang example para hindi tayo magkamali. So, ayan. Ang kanyang kinuhan topic ay community pantry guidelines. 
So, kumuha siya sa source 1 niya sa Inquirer. So, this is a newspaper. So, siguro online na itong kinuha niya kasi merong HTTP. And then, ang isa niyang source pa ay CNN Philippines. So, parehas siyang online pero magkaiba ng website. Okay? Date, April 27. And then, yung isa naman naging 28. Reporter, dapat nakalagay kung sino po ang reporter. And then, ano yung headline or main title of the newspaper or story? Lagi namang may headline, hindi nawawala yan. And then, source cited. Siyempre, kapag nagre-report, lagi may pinaghuhugutan. Kanino galing yon Kay interior secretary Eduardo Anyo. Siguro siya ang speaker ng inquirer. O yung isa naman ay kay DILG secretary. And, oh, okay. The same pala. Kino... Pagkaiba lang ng pagkakasulat, pero pareha sa say, Secretary Anyo ang pinagkuhanan o naging source. And then, statement of the source, tingnan natin yun ha. If health standards are not followed or there are violations pertaining to such, this is a ground to stop the community pantry. So, ibig sabihin, pag daw hindi nasunod ang protocol, ipatitigil ang community pantry. Ang sabi naman dito, a community pantry is unable to enforce social distancing and other minimum health protocols while handing out goods will be shut down. Okay guys, pag tiningnan nyo, magkaiba lang yung tinatawag natin choice of words, pero yung, uh, yung idea ay iisa. So, pagka ganito guys, mamanghaba naman, di ko ga maintindihan. Humanap kayo ng mga keywords na naiintindihan nyo, kagaya ng saltang not followed. Okay? So, hindi nasunod. Tingnan nyo, alin dito ang, sa kabila, alin ang synonymous diyan sa not followed? Okay, atin nga i-highlight ito ng very light. So, ito yung not followed. Ang pwede natin, ay, well, how do Ayan. Unable to enforce. Medyo malalim lang, ano. Pero yung saltang unable, ibig sabihin, hindi na susunod. And then, here, gumamit siya ng uh, word na stop. And then, here, gumamit siya ng word na shut down. So, parehas ang idea. Magkaiba lang yung choice of words na ginamit. Mas, sabihin na natin, mas madaling intindihin or mas makamasa itong kay inquirer. Samantalang kay CNN naman ay mas formal. Now, kung titignan naman kasi natin ang background ng dalawang newspaper na to, magkaiba din naman talaga ang kanila parang sabi natin category. Kasi syempre, CNN is an international uh, news platform. So, kaya siguro medyo mahirap ang pagkaka-English ng ating mga reporters doon. Okay? So, so here's your table. Ma'am, kukopyahin ba namin ang table? Siyempre, of course, kukopyahin nyo ang table. And look, you can also enhance the color of your table, personalize it if you want. Pag lang kakalimutan yung pinaka-format. So, you have your topic, your source, 1 and 2, date of publication, writer, reporter, headline of a story, source cited, statement information from the source. Again, Kahit po anong balita ay pwede. Kahit anong bagay na gusto mong i-research, gusto mong pag-usapan, gusto mong i-share ay pwede. So, our criteria, content, relevance and accuracy, focus, ideas and reflection, presentation, tingnan nyo hindi nawawala ang neatness and development, and of course, mechanics, spelling and grammar. Alam kong magkokopya kayo sa internet, so kopyay natin ang tama. And... For this, you will have 20 points for our performance test. So, this is um, the mo our most important output for this uh, uh, week. So, assimilation na tayo. Use the checklist you have learned in this lesson to assess the truthfulness and accuracy of the material you viewed. You can easily remember its content through the infographic, fill in the missing items using the information in each box. So, kukapiyahin nyo syempre uli yung infographic, pero yung mga drawing pwedeng hindi na. Kasi baka hindi naman natin kayanin. Pero ang maganda dito kay assimilations, Kay assimilation rather, ang ating authors nagbigay sa atin ng three choices. Unbiased creator, producer, resource person who can inform, explain, or persuade. Ibig sabihin yung walang pinapanigan daw. Ano? 
Huwag kakalimutan na pag sinabing unbiased, wala siyang pinapanigan. Reputable and credible creator, producer, resource person. So, ibig sabihin, yung pagkatao niya ay hindi natin makokwestiyon. Talagang siya ay reliable. Correctness of the information, verifiable in other sources. So, pagiging tama daw ng mga information na nakalagay. Ito lang, itong tatlong choices na to ang ilalagay nyo sa authorship, sa accuracy, sa purpose, and objectivity. Now, if you cannot, if you find this test difficult, then I suggest you go back to our introduction kasi nandudoon yan. I believe sa learning test 1, nandudoon siya. Assessment, instructions, or direction, fill in each blank with the appropriate word or phrase. So, basahin nga lang natin ng mabilis. Blank is a false information that is spread even though it is known to be false. Okay, binigay ko yan kanina sa ating mga, I think, third slide yata yun. Number two, if you encounter an information which is potentially false, do you blank using a site like snopes.com? Okay, binigay din doon sa lecture na yan and itong snopes.com na yan. It is important that the content of a video is well founded, founded on blank. Whether its purpose is to teach, inform, explain, and persuade. Okay, class, dito sa number 3, makikita nyo na yung mga different purposes of uh, material. View the know. What are the purpose? To teach, to inform, to explain, to persuade. Pwede rin pong to entertain. And number four, misinformation and disinformation are the two ways in which you can categorize blank. Number five, it is necessary for students for you to evaluate a material based on its blank and accuracy. Siyempre, hindi kayo pinahirapan ng ating author dahil nagbigay siya ng five choices for these five items. Okay? And of course, our last part, Ayan na yun, the personal assessment on learner's level of performance or tinatawag ko itong P-A-L-L-P. Sinor cut lang po natin. Ginagawa na natin ito again. Star, if you perform the test without any difficulty, check if you did it. Uh, even though it is challenging, pero natapos mo pa din. Question mark, if you did not, uh, if you were not able to do it, and you need additional enrichment activities. So, here is our table. Task 1, Task 2, 3, 4, and of course, we have assimilation and assessment. Kasama po yun. Of course, again, thank you so much to our writers, Ma'am uh, Tezalonica C. Abisamis and Dian Joanna Encanto. And for and this time, I remember, pasalamatan din natin natin mga checkers, Ma'am Maria Madel Rubia, Luz Biminda Sincha, Richel F. Quintero, Remson P. Sumila, Jene Generosa, F. Subieta, and Ermelo A. Escobinha. And of course, ang nagsasalita po sa likod ng video ay eh, walang iba kundi si Ma'am Annie Ramirez po, an English teacher from Batangas National High School. So guys, good luck. And if you have questions, just write it on our GC. Thank you. Goodbye.